What's up everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I'm bringing you the review for Shardlight, a point-and-click adventure game from Wadget Games, set in the beautiful and happy-go-lucky future after a nuclear war has raged across the land. Because, as always, someone wanted someone else's stuff, so of course eradicating the world and making it practically untraversable makes perfect sense. Hey, I like your jacket, I'm gonna burn down your house and hope it's still there when we put out the embers kind of thing. Now, playing as Amy Wellard, a mechanic slash kleptomaniac, within a small amount of time, discoveries are made, people's crap is rifled through and stolen, and Amy discovers the truth about the men in power and what she may have to do to bring them down. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe or swing by Patreon. So here's the review for Shardlight, Gangs of New York Death Cults, Questionable Late Night Mannequin Use, and The World's Worst Lottery. Graphics are up first. Now, listen, it's blocky. The adherence to the Adventure Game Studio engine versus moving to a newer engine like they have stated that they will do really shows through here, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it because, frankly, most people who don't have cataracts or have their eyes closed during playing it are going to notice. The game just never looked as clean or as easy to identify objects as their past titles have, but many locations are still highly interesting, and the developer's eye for unique locales really does continue. I'm going to be honest, this is their first title where I felt that the reflection of what the designer wanted to get to me as the player was minimalized and indeed in many ways negated by the engine itself, including many of the wonderful, if hard to look at, character designs. I get that the gobby mess of brown and sometimes bit of red blocks is a character's face, but at what point do you wonder if someone's choosing to continue with the status quo because it's just what they want to do versus what's best for their titles? Who am I to second guess? Now, that being said, many locations, as I said, are interesting and show technical flourishes, like the market with its moving pedestrians going about their lives that adds movement to scenes where older titles would just have had nothing. The color palette, however, is a little bit sad. It's a choice of zombie greens and oh shit, what's that scab yellows? And though there are some attempts to mix it up, the color palette can at times make it difficult finding locational items around the game world. Listen, I don't want to harp on them too much, but the engine just flatly shows its age and with an unfortunate color choice as well as it being finicky with screen size and resolution it artificially erects a bit of a technology wall between the gamer and the experience that I have never felt in their prior titles. That being said, at the exact same time they have a negative, they have a positive, and I really thought that the animations for characters doing things within the game world was spot on. In the end, I guess it looks pretty much like you would expect. Take it or leave it. Sound, music, and voice. Reminder to all citizens, the next drawing in the vaccine Nothing lottery useful. will be held tomorrow at sundown. Julius Caesar. I don't think he'd be... Is that an ele... Yep, scavenged it out of the waste. I got lucky. I'll say you did. I've been looking. Can let you borrow this one once I'm done with it, if you need it. We're intensive. Haven't you got people in your government who do this sort of thing? Alas, I do not. Which is why I am in desperate need of a citizen such as yourself to help me. And sound is up first. As with many games of these types, the sounds range from poor to excellent, depending on the structure of the event and the sound effect being played. While the occasional sword battle sounded like kids flicking one another with wooden dowels in shop class when the teacher wasn't looking, everywhere else things were more authentic. It won't win any awards, but aside from the sword fighting, there wasn't really anything too egregious that I noticed. And of course that brings us to music. You know, I guess I'd just say it's average. It has real guitars, piano leads, and various other instruments playing, not only for locations, but for characters. So everyone has a bit of theme, and so too do the burnt out and desiccated remains of most of the city that the game plays out in. I'd say good. Though instrument choice remained safe, compositions didn't, and there were times while listening to a track or two where I sort of wondered if someone was just hammering the hell out of whatever instrument they had. Some tracks seemed to have a little bit of a hard time finding their progression and just the theme for the location, and you're left in a bit of mystery as to what you should be feeling. There are a few notable standouts, however, like the eerie ambience of tunnel locations or the deeply disturbing vibe of a tower filled with mannequins strapped into odd positions that is simply never explained in the game. That was a perfect mix of imagery and music right there. Voice. You know, this is good with an assortment of heard them before actors from previous titles from these guys, as well as some new up and comers as well. Amy's voiced well, and most situations have an emotional connection that you can pick up and is reflected in the voice actor's work, regardless of who they are. While there are no noticeable standouts amongst all of the actors, I felt, in the end, 
Really? That's sort of how voice should be. But I'm telling you right now, get used to these three words, I don't think. Because around the middle section, when the game bogs down and things begin to make about as much sense as Full House being back on the air, you're going to hear, I don't think, about a million times as you click, rub, nub, fondle, and tickle every goddamned item in the game world trying to figure out what goes where. Amy's feedback at this point in particular begins to wear incredibly thin, and I would have loved for just a couple more notices that something wasn't completely working versus the same sentence repeated so many times I wanted to turn off the voice completely. And of course, all that brings us to gameplay. You play as Amy Wellard, an ex-mechanic who starts out the game taking a state-run lottery job. Now, basically imagine if the running man and maybe Dirty Jobs had a kid, and that would be the lottery. You see, almost everyone in the future is sick with green lung, which, though hilariously colorful sounding, probably sucks. So if you want, you can join the work lottery, where you take on odd jobs for the state, like turning on nuclear reactors without radioactive suits. And if you succeed, you get a lottery ticket to hopefully win some vaccine. Of course, there are logical problems, especially that little part where returning from one of these damn jobs probably guarantees death anyway, so that's like winning the lottery in the middle of a friggin' heart attack. But in the end, hope is everything, so people do it, and you're one of those people. And that's pretty much how the game starts. Now, soon Amy is embroiled in a multifaceted revolution against the state and meeting all sort of crazy people with their own backstories and prejudices as she tries to weave herself through the various choices that dangerous knowledge can sometimes present to a person. Shardlight does have the same positives and negatives that we expect from a point and click, but that doesn't mean it's all the same. First, yeah, you do skip and dance across levels, taking a thief's laundry list of items around you as you try to progress, and though none of the puzzles have that eclectic mix and foundation of older titles like Blazing Dragons and others that had you mix bird carcasses, toilet bowl plungers, and a strainer to make a dishwasher, you still do get the occasional what the f moment, like the time I made a sterile work environment by boiling water over dead bodies. A dead body fire. Hey, I got an idea. Let's do eye surgery with a sledgehammer and a 1970 Dodge Dart bumper. Talk about one step forward, one step back. Now, while most of the puzzles are basic and easy to apply normal game logic, there is one or two that due to their very nature can be perplexing. But that's still a better percentage when you really look at it than many point-and-click titles have anyway. However, Shardlight adores removing your inventory as the game progresses, allowing for refreshing newness as items are removed and sometimes never returned, while others are always seeming to get back into your trusty little inventory, like your Swiss Army crossbow that somehow turns Amy into a long-range sniper every time she holds it, though she apparently has no weapons training prior to this. Though this isn't the first time a game has done this kind of inventory refresh, it's handled particularly well here in Shardlight. Now, while gameplay is fairly rote, a point-and-click game isn't usually about revitalizing the way it works, but instead it's about presenting interesting and captivating stories through a robust system of gameplay feedback that people who buy it can expect. And that is really where Shardlight excels with some truly interesting story twists and turns as you continue to uncover the horribleness of what is occurring in the world and who all is involved. While possibly not up to the brilliance of their past titles, the fact is Shardlight's world is well realized, and though you're always chomping at the bit to see and experience more than is possible, that disappointment, I feel, is created due to the engagement of the enjoyment you feel while walking around this highly realized space. Also, the gameplay in Shard Light does lend itself to story building, such as a couple unique moments where the main character interacts with the world in a way that both reflects the environment and actions that are occurring, like kids outside your home engaging in an almost fatalistic nursery rhyme while still being kids at the same time, and your character gets to engage in that. This both naturally extends your knowledge of what this dreary-ass place is like, but it also solidifies the feeling of people living in a world. A kid's still a kid, even if they live in a shit hovel, and though these guys and gals aren't sitting up playing with dolls and laughing their asses off like they're batshit crazy, they all act surprisingly age-appropriate for their environment. But I gotta add one more thing. I just really do wish this all wasn't trapped so diligently in an engine that makes experiencing it so difficult. It's a testament to the world's creation and the game designers that this world still feels so fully realized while also looking so goddamn ancient. And before you freak out, I'm a massive fan of both older and newer point-and-click game titles, and I'm accustomed to the older engines. But it's hard not to sort of wish they would move to a new engine more quickly, as it might be easier to attract those who don't instantly jump at this developer's titles being announced because of the way the game actually looks. Fun factor. I liked it. It's a great time, and though about of medium length, the choices made resonate through the story, and though one or two things aren't wrapped up, I felt at the end that I had made the right decisions for what Amy and I knew, and I enjoyed my time with her. Adventure games might not be the adrenalized and idealized form factor for explaining fun to other people, but there is a slow, enjoyable burn to these titles, and aside from a couple bumps in the road, in the middle of the game in particular, it was actually very enjoyable. So as always, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, wait for a deep, deep sale, 
or rent, depending on if it's console or PC, and of course, never touch it. This is a buy. The price is perfect, the game offers more than enough, and in the end, despite it being behind a fairly archaic game engine, I still thought the game presented itself well. And of course, that brings us to our conclusion. Do not smash that like button. If you did like it, hit thumbs up. If you disliked it, hit thumbs down. And hey, peace out.